Hi everyone, welcome back to Japanese Politics 101. We like to talk on this series about the spectrum of things that comprise Japanese politics. There are a lot of different things. And based on a comment from one of our viewers following our focus on the alt-right, today we're going to talk about the alt-left. But before we get into it, please don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. Proliferate this with your friends. Tell them how great Tokyo on Fire is. Michael, the alt-left is something that really doesn't share much of a power base here in Japanese contemporary politics, does it? When you first suggested that we talk about the old left based on this uh, comment from... After you finished laughing? Yeah. Well, it wasn't so much laughing, it's just um, a, a sense of horror that what are we going to talk about? Right. Uh, they were uh, the, the hard left, uh, the student left that emerged uh, as a protest movement both against the conservative uh, Japanese mainstream lifestyle uh, that happened in the 1960s, but also against the mainline left-wing parties, the Communist Party of Japan and, and also the Socialist Party now called the SDP. Uh, Fighting against their fathers. They're, they're, basically, that's right. That, the, the, that movement uh, was suicidal. Mm -hmm. uh, and indeed, uh, in the case of, uh, of its last stages, indeed, basically did the police's job for them by by executing each other. Right. Uh, and so it's, uh, it, I was saying, well, what are we going to talk about that has something to do with contemporary right. life? Right, right. Well, probably not very much. It seems like the alt-left movement, members of that, have either gone to jail or have been absorbed by contemporary society. You can run into them now, going even into the, the various ministries, and people will talk about, yes, well, in the 60s I was at Todai and we were, we were battling against the police and we had a great fun and all my friends are, are you know, of that ilk too. Yeah, and the, there was a time period when the universities were closed and they were taken over by... War zones. By, and yeah, and yeah. The, 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 when you see the images of, of the main clock tower at Todai and, and, and the, the firemen's... Fire bombs. And, and, yeah. and they also, but also the water cannons playing on it. And you say, wait, that's... Tokyo University, that staid source of all of Japan's um, uh, bureaucrats, that's mm -hmm. that place? Yeah. Uh, but, and that generation is now actually of retirement age. Right. And so uh, they, they've been there, uh, they, they've been willing to talk about it, and it, it's, uh, it's actually an interesting situation, at least if you, if you want to talk about the left in a broader sense. Uh, and their greatest moment, which was the 1960 uh, war against Abe's grandfather, basically, which was over the renewal of the security treaty, which was their moment of glory. They actually were able to bring down Kishi Nobusuke. Uh, he was able to ramrod through the Diet in a very peculiar session uh, the, the renewal of the security treaty. But it cost him his job, and in fact, he was actually stabbed. But this not by a leftist, by a rightist, uh, and and he, he eventually had to resign and, and leave office. That was their moment of of greatest influence. They broke into the Diet in, in, during rioting. There were hundreds of thousands of people in mass demonstrations, basically cutting the Diet building off from the rest of Japan. That that was their moment of glory, and it, it's interesting. Uh, at least in terms of history, uh, that the song that came out of that, which was Ue o Muite Aru Koyo, where Ue o Muite Aru Koyo, is the song about that summer, written by a Japanese leftist, is the, still the only Japanese song that has ever been number one on the U.S. pop charts. Uh -huh. it, it was given the name Skiaki, but that's actually out of the far left of, of Japanese life. I I'm glad you went into commenting on Japanese politics rather than into the musical field. I, thank God, yes. Uh, who, who, otherwise I'd be singing all the time. <laughs> but th that was their moment of glory. And then they yeah. went into self-destruction in, in terms of becoming increasingly radicalized. The reason why we talk about them all today is two reasons. One, the last stragglers 
the the people who have wanted posters have been up in the in police boxes for decades are being picked up off the streets or, or out of houses or wherever and they're being found and they're being put on trial for crimes that they committed mm -hmm. what ostensibly should have been de decades after i mean decades before the uh, statute of limitations they shouldn't be tried for these crimes uh, because they've lived incognito in peace, peaceably for many many decades nevertheless the police made sure that there were changes put to the laws so that certain crimes would be eternally uh, open for prosecution mm -hmm. and those people are being picked up the other aspect of course is the fact that some of them flew to pyongyang and became the core group members of a set of people who lured Japanese to no captivity in North Korea, the abductees. Mm -hmm. So they are, those two passages are the way that they're still alive. The abductees issue is very much alive thanks to Mr. Abe himself personally, rode into power the first time on the right. abductees issue by North, the abduction of Japanese citizens that happened in the 1970s and the story of their families afterwards. Mr. Abe was always their advocate and used that story as a part of his building up power inside the LDP and still meets with them and they still have to be a part. NHK is pushed to report on stories involving them by the Japanese government. So we get keep from it in that, the public and that, consciousness, and just and keep it up. And that drags in these far leftists that mm -hmm. were all a part of this kidnapping of Japanese citizens. So that's, that's, in terms of the left, that's what we hear about. Where in the spectrum does the Japanese Red Brigade, brigade uh, sit? Well, they were, they were, okay, so we have in, in the, the Socialist Party, now the Social Democratic Party, which is now a, a micro party of just a few members, fewer than, in fact, than would be the legal requirement for be, being a party that gets money from the government. They got a couple months, uh, a few don't months, they? They have a few months before the December. They also got more than 2% in the last national election, and that's the other criteria. Then there's the Communist Party, which is a descendant of the mainline Stalinist party that was established and, and survived after 1922. But then there's the far left were truly violent radicals who wanted to bring revolution to Japan. And for the most part, their children, grandchildren are alive today. And that dealing with that legacy of these radicals, many of whom committed murder, mm -hmm. uh, but mostly on, mem on their own memberships, uh, they're still there today. Now, the, if you want to talk about an alt-left to go with an alt-right, right. Uh, you would have to talk about the student movement that, uh, that came up. Sealed. Yeah, seals the uh, the students for for the established for the preservation of liberal democracy. That group, which grew out of both the uh, security legislation that Mr. Abe put forward, creating collective security, and then uh, stayed alive uh, with the with the creation of the Designated Secrets Act, mm -hmm. all the way up until the 2016 House of Counselors election. That was a, a unique moment because, yes, it reprised a lot of the 1960s energy that in the same kind of energy surrounding the diet with people. Young but, people. Yeah, but, but in this case, nowhere near the numbers of the 1960 Ampo crisis. Right. Uh, but still, for the first time, students showing up and protesting against the uh, involvement the, in politics. Yeah their, yeah, their involvement had been, you know, people hadn't seen it since the right. late 1960s. And so it garnered a tremendous amount of attention and it was thought that, okay, this is the, the, the natural student movement that should have been always there. And it's just these particular elements, both of which were core elements of the Abe security policy mm -hmm. that got Japanese back into the streets and particularly Japan, Japanese students. After the 2016 election, now, however, where they tried to somehow weaken uh, the power that the LDP and Mr. Abe held over the overall political situation, they were not successful mm -hmm. uh, in that. And they simply said, that's it, we're yep. gone. And they had already, they had said previously, even if they would have been successful, that they were gone. And it was a 
basically because they were going to graduate from university. Right. Basically, get into the they have to get field. jobs. Some yep. of them, they were a very clever bunch of folks. Uh, first of all, they're extremely stylish. Uh, they knew that the, the culture of the times is not ideological, it's style. Right. And so they made sure that they looked great. They made sure that they had charismatic and really physically att very attractive leaders. Who we would, weren't invited, obviously. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. But, the, but leaders like, uh, on the male side, Okuda Aki, who... With his with his beard and his and, and his you know thin good looks, and then on the the woman's side with uh, Fukuda Kanako, where I mean the, I was at the FCGJ, the uh, Foreign Correspondence Club, and they would say to me, "How do we get to, how do we get to interview the, the girl? We want to interview the girl." I, and showing them you know what where their prurient interests were, <laughs> uh, they had that they had the sex appeal. They had also the ability to organize uh, relationships with fashion houses mm -hmm. so that they, would, they were really well-dressed or they would be, th their posters were really stylish, they were up-to-date, and a lot of them, they admitted, were in English. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, you know, here in Japan, if you write it all in, in, in Nihongo, if you all write it in Japanese, it's for the domestic audience only. But what we want to do is boomerang it. Right. What we wanted to do is have us do the demonstration. It's about Japanese issues. Have the signs in English so that the foreign press writes about it. And then the Japanese press Very clever. will write okay. about the fact that the foreign press is writing about us. Yes. And that's how we'll get into the newsrooms mm -hmm. of Japan by this boomerang effect. And, and so they had, and, the, and they would put, uh, they would put uh, expletives in their uh, their signs. I mean, when you see it, and they, they attracted not only young people, but mm -hmm. people from all walks of life. And when you see a grandmother who's holding up a sign in English in front of, uh, instead of the Kante that says, I can't believe we're still talking about this shit. And, and there she is, the old gra Japanese grandmother with the sign. That's media yes, gold. Right. And they knew it. And they mm -hmm. were very savvy about that. But they're no more, basically. Right. That, that entire ethos and that entire effort, first of all, it didn't stop the Abe administration from passing the bills that then became law. And it didn't stop the Abe administration in its efforts to win more power in the House of Councillors. It did that right. because the opposition was so weak. Opposition the opposite, uh, political parties embraced this movement. They had, Somebody's doing something! That's right, they had Aki Okuda appear on stage with you know, the head of the Socialist Party or the head of, of the Democratic Party of the time. And you, could the hear the chants, you could hear the chants all the way inside the, the voting of the chamber. It's, it, they were there and they, had, they, had, they were able to organize things, but then poof, yep. they're gone. So the left, I mean, to crystallize it for our, our members, even though it might not be uh, completely accurate today, what are the basic precepts of the left? I mean, is it, is it honor the emperor? It's not, it's actually- It's the exact opposite. Kill the emperor. It's, well, it was kill the emperor, but we have to, we have to note that acceptance of the emperor has changed. The communist party, which was to, wanted to have a people's dictatorship established, as of two years ago, starts to now attend the first session of the Diet, mm -hmm. where the emperor is presiding, and they're finally cool with that, right. which is, they weren't cool with it for a very, very long time. And the, the, the left has also, especially in terms of the imperial institution, they realize the imperial institution is part of Japan, and they'll play with that as well. Uh, but in terms of what they believe in, uh, the, they, cr crystallized the, the crystallized thing is that they, is. they are, actually the most conservative parties. Why? Because they don't want anything touched in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Even though the Constitution has Article 96 explaining how you change the Constitution, how you mend it, they say, no, we're going to protect it. We're going to keep it the way it is. Japan, the post-war era, has been a paradise, and we don't want to mess with it. Protect the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So these revolutionary parties are actually the ones who want to change the least. Right. Which, if you think about what the word revolutionary party and means, makes no sense at right. all. That's formally one. Mm -hmm. Preserve the Constitution. 
they have all kinds of social welfare ideas, which are, un unfortunately for them, very similar to the ideas that the Abe administration has put into place in, its second, in, in his second time around. Uh, it, there's virtually nothing that the Abe administration wants to do in terms of child care, in terms of elder care, in terms of health care, that is really very different from what the, the leftists wanted to do in the first place. Espe this is especially true in terms of education. The, one of their basic planks is we're going to make all education free up to college or in, even including college. The Abe administration is entirely up to that. In fact, the, uh, the, the LDP wants to have a constitutional amendment making mm -hmm. high school free. So where they stand, they basically they stand around Article 9 and just hold on to it. Mm -hmm. And that's basically where they are because they've been unable to take their numbers in the streets put them in the ballot box, and also their program has pretty much been absorbed by the LDP. So one could say on, on this, this balance poll that we have the center and alt-left and alt-right, the, the balance is really heavily weighted to the, the right-hand end of the spectrum, and the left is really light-hearted, showing up from time to time, making claims, but really not much staying power not much of, a, of an essence for a message. Well, then that's one of the reasons why you and I look at Mr. Abe as a shoe-in in terms of the September election, because he has to deal, yeah. he knows he has to deal with the, the right, and that the left has, has absolutely no push in Japanese mm -hmm. society. And he know everybody else in the LDP knows it as well. And they realize that he is, as a, has a reputation of being a staunch, hardline right. rightist, and he can appeal to the only side of this balance beam that matters, which is the right side. Mm -hmm. And he, he's their man, and as long as he's there, the Japanese society as a whole is harmonious, because the really important, dangerous element, which is the far right, is appeased. Mm -hmm. Japanese Politics 101, where we study the whole spectrum that comprises Japanese politics. Please stay tuned. Thank <music> you.